Hello, welcome to Biograde TV. If you're new here, please subscribe and turn on the notification so you don't miss our next video. Biography of Maurice Nawalagma Yamyogo. Maurice Nawalagma Yamyogo was born on the 31st of December 1921 at Kodogo, Upper Volta, along with his twin sister, Guamanegdo, to Mosi parents, whom he described as a heathen family completely given to a whole mob of superstitions. His parents gave him the name Nawa Lagwemba, also spelled Nawalagna, which means he comes to unite them. From a very young age, Nawa Lagwemba was very interested in Christianity and this inclination earned him a great deal of bullying from his family. It is said that the young Yamiogo received an emergency baptism on the 28th of July 1929, a year before schedule, after being struck by lightning. The priest Van der Schaeg, who performed the baptism, gave him the name Maurice as a patron saint. His mother died three days later, supposedly from the shock. After this event, he adopted the name Maurice Yamiogo, aiming to become a priest. After spending a few years at school in his village, in 1934, Maurice Yamiogo gained admission to the minor seminary of Babur, leaving his family to pursue his studies. Babur was one of the most prestigious institutions in the country, aside from the fact that it produced most of the country's priests, the minor seminary students also filled the very highest ranks of public and private administration. There he met people who would become important figures later, such as Joseph Kizerbo, Joseph Yoedraugo, and Pere Tapsoba, with whom he formed a close friendship. But his relationship strayed far from the priestly standard. Yamiogo wanted to be a priest, but he was very keen on women and parties, and in 1939, he left the minor seminary of Pabri without graduating. In spite of his failure to graduate, Yamiogo's education allowed him to gain a public role as a shipping clerk for the French colonial administration. This extremely prestigious post meant success, security, and prestige. In this period, he increased his involvement with women, eventually marrying an educated woman from Godogo, Felicite Zagre. As part of the World War II war effort, Yamiogo was sent to Abidjan in Lower Côte d'Ivoire in 1940. Once back to his native town after the war, he was elected to the first territorial assembly of Côte d'Ivoire as the general councillor for Kodogo on the 15th of December 1946. Two years later, on the 28th of July 1948, he was elected grand councillor of French West Africa for Upper Volta after successfully persuading one father Guanison, a European who had been chosen by the College of Natives for one of the Grand Councillor posts, to withdraw his candidacy and support him. Between 1948 and 1952, Yamiogo experienced some electoral setbacks and returned to his private role as a shipping clerk. From 1953, he began attempts at relaunching his political career and in 1956, several events worked in his favor. 1956 was a year with much political shuffling and instability. The already existing parties merged and affiliated. New parties were formed, such as the Voltaic Democratic Movement MDV, which Yamiogo joined. He was in Kalubali. The new president of the governing council of Upper Volta decided to establish a coalition government and Yamiogo was appointed Minister of Agriculture. Again in 1958, Koulibaly appointed Yamiogo to the strategic position of Minister of the Interior. When on the 4th of September 1958, Koulibaly died in Paris after an illness, Yamiogo was elected as president of the governing council. Once president, Yamiogo wasted no time in securing his newfound position. 
This he did by revamping the territorial assembly using special powers conferred on him by the assembly, establishing a single party government and killing other attempts to establish new parties. On the 11th of December 1959, Yamiogo was elected as the first president of the Republic of Upper Volta without opposition. This trust characterized Yamiogo's leadership starting with the death of President Silvanos Olympio of neighboring Togo in the coup of 13th of January 1963. Yamiogo arrested and imprisoned the likes of Joseph Yuwadraogo, his old school friend, and even his cousin. Also, Yamiogo would, without prior consultation and depending on his moods, announce the appointment or removal of ministers on the radio. Embezzlement, corruption and flamboyant living was also common in Yamiogo's government. Internally, Yamiogo's government was in chaos, having lost the support of the traditional elite, the clergy, due to the removal of subsidies for private schools, most of which were Catholic the imprisonment and divorce of his wife, Felicite, his remarriage to his mistress, Miss Codevore, Nathalie Monaco, and his clumsy on-radio attack on Muslims. Due to the economic weakness of Opa Volta caused by Yamiogo's reckless spending, Opa Volta was helpless in the face of a countrywide measles epidemic in March and April 1965. Subsequently, his severe measures also led to more disfavor with the unions due to his attempts to reduce the salaries of all civil servants by 20% and this resulted in his eventual fall from power. In December 1965, autonomous unions led by Joseph Uedraogo challenged and denounced the austerity plans. A general strike was slated for 3rd January 1966, but by 2nd of January, students began a non-violent protest joined by over 100,000 people of Ogadaugo and allegedly the police, calling for Yamiogo's resignation and appealing to the army to take power. The result was the president's resignation and a return to military control, followed by mixed civil and military government. Yamiogo was detained under house arrest, completely alienated, and he attempted to commit suicide on two occasions. He was later granted a presidential pardon on the 5th of August 1970 and set free. He married Jeanette Ezona Cansoli, making his third marriage. Maurice Yamiogo continued to participate in the political space of his country but indirectly through his son, Herman Yamiogo. In May 1983, Maurice Yamiogo organized a protest in favor of President Jean-Baptiste Yuedraogo, who was overthrown by the Thomas Sankara-led National Council of the Revolution CNR. This nearly cost Yamiogo his life, but he was spared and imprisoned instead, thanks to Blaise Kampauri. On the first anniversary of Sankara's revolution in 1984, Maurice Yamiogo was set free and he declared his allegiance to Sankara on radio. In September 1993, Yamiogo became very sick and treatment attempts in Paris failed. He decided to live out his last days in Kaudogo but died on the flight home on the 15th of September. He was buried two days later on the 17th. What have we missed out of this biography of Yamiogo? Let's know in the comment section. Will it be ridiculous to subscribe to our channel? If no, please like this video, share and subscribe to our channel.